Um, I'm sure you've you know this equation already. Kp is equal to Kc rt raised to the power delta n. So we want to prove how come that's true. So we're going to use uh, this setup where we have a reaction A and B reacting to give us uh, C and D. And then of course we are going to use uh, small letters to denote our coefficients. So A, B, C, and D. Okay. So we know that from this equation, our KP expression is going to be dependent on the pressures for what we have. So of course in this case we are assuming all these are in gaseous states, right? So pressure of A and then we say pressure of uh, so of course it's supposed to be products of the reactants, not so. So for our products we have C. So I'll say the pressure of C, pressure of D, and then of course they are supposed to be raised to a coefficient C and D respectively. And then for the other one again, for our reactants we have pressure of A and then we have pressure of B. So I do know that you guys already understand where all these are coming from. This is the KP expression in terms of pressure. Okay. So now, we do know the ideal gas flow. So the ideal gas flow tells us to say that pressure multiplied by volume is basically equivalent to NRT. Right? Very true. What happens if we decide to divide by volume on both ends? So dividing by volume, this is what we're going to have. So your pressure is going to be equal to NRT. So I'll try to isolate the the V and divide it into what? The N there. So number of moles divided by the volume. What does it give us? So we basically know that that is going to be equivalent to what? To molarity or concentration, if you like. Okay, so this is the equation that we've come up from the ideal gas law. Pressure is equal to MRT. Okay. So now, this tells us to say that when you talk about the pressure of A, for example, using the same equation, if you say the pressure of A is going to be equal to the concentration of A, because M is denoting the molar concentration. So if we are talking about A, the pressure of A, it's going to be equal to the molar concentration of A multiplied by RT. And that is going to apply to everything that we have for all the pressures of the different letters that are being represented in this equation. And let's try to substitute that now in the next step. So I'll write Kp is equal to, so where is the pressure of C? It's going to be a concentration of C, RRT, okay, raised the power, that is C. And then of course I'll go to the pressure of D, which is going to be a concentration of D, RRT, raised the power, D. Okay, so I can use, uh, let me just use a different car so that we're able to see clearly. So that is C and then that is D. And then we can divide. So on the bottom we have the pressure of A. So it's going to be the concentration of A. And then RT. And then that is all supposed to be raised to the power of what? The power of A. And then what else do we have? And then we have, of course the other one is going to be raised to the power B. So... The concentration of B, RRT, is also raised to the power B. So this is all coming from the ideal gas law. Now let's try to simplify this and make sense out of it. So we need to distribute the powers, right? So I'll just do that from that same step. So we do know that if we are raising everything to the power C, what is in the brackets here? So I can drop the power C. It's going to be the power C. And then even this is going to be the power C. So that I can remove it outside there. So what it means is it's like if you have 2 times 4. And then this is raised to the power 2. It's the same as 2 to the power 2 times 4 to the power 2. So we are doing the same to what we have. So we are just going to distribute the powers. So D is going to be distributed to that concentration as well as RRT to the power D. Even on the bottom, A is going to be the power A. And then RRT is also going to be the power A. 
for b as well to be the power b and then rt is also going to be the power b so that i can remove these ones that are outside okay now hoping that you've understood this stage uh what we can do is we can separate them so we'll move to the next stage kp is going to be equal to so what we have we have a concentration of c raised to the power c and then we have rt raised to the power c and then for the other part we have the concentration of d raised to the power d and then we have rt raised to the power d okay and then we can divide concentration of a raised to the power a and then we have rt to the power a and then of course the other part we can have concentration of b raised to the power b and then we have rt raised to the power b okay so i can now erase this part the top part so that we see what we're going to have so now kp we can now we're trying to derive that kp is equal to kc r to the power delta n so what can we do so i'll correct everything that is dealing with kc these are dealing with kc since we know that multiplication is commutative so it doesn't matter what you start with in your writing so i'll start with a concentration of c and then I'll go to the concentration of D. And then, even on the bottom, I'll do the same. I'll start with the concentration of A, and then the concentration of B. Okay? And then I can draw a line in advance there. Bah. Okay? And then, of course, we know these are supposed to be raised to where C, D, A, and B. From the equation that is on the bottom there, that's what we are seeing. Now, what remains is, so we have a product of RT and RT. So, when you are multiplying the same bases, so RT and RT are the same. So, from the rules of um, indices, when you are multiplying, what do you know there? So, if you are multiplying the same bases, you just add the powers. So, you have addition of C. Sorry. Yeah, you have addition of C and D, D for the top part. And then on the bottom equal, you have RT multiplying by RT, which we are going to show. Which is also going to be the addition of b and d oh sorry the addition of a and b so we have a and b right so if we go back to our equation our very simple equation a reacting with b giving us c and d and then looking at the coefficients to be a b c and d what can we see so if we are to write the kc expression for this equation what are we going to have so it's basically going to be, of course, just this part that we are seeing there, right? That is our KC expression. So on the next step, we can say our KP is equal to KC. Now multiply it by what? So what happens if you are dividing the same bases? So RT is the same, so we maintain it. And then we're going to have a difference between what? So the one that is on the numerator part is C plus D. We'll add that and then we'll subtract the power for the denominator which is a plus b so now the addition of c and d is this for products a plus b is for the reactants so instead of writing c plus d minus a plus b we can just say it is just the change in the number of moles so therefore our kp is equal to kc rt raised to the power change in number of moles which tells us to say c plus d are the stoichiometric coefficients of our products a plus b are the stoichiometric coefficients of our reactant so that is what the delta n represents and this is a proof that we can have for this equation so thank you very much for watching